and the countdown is ended. And it means that we are back for another episode of it's time, Dirt to man. Dust. We missed last week, uh, and yeah. that was my fault. I was, uh, how dare I? I took a vacation with the wife. <laughs> we were childless for the week. He was with yeah. his grandparents, and we decided to take uh, a little vacation down to Hilton Head Island um, where it rained about 50% of the time, man, that we were down there. But I'm going to tell you, the more that I tow this thing around and the more campgrounds I see, I... Man, it is insane how many Jeep Wranglers are flat towed. Oh, it's absolutely. Absolutely freaking nuts. Like we we generally take our bikes down to these campgrounds and we'll load it. We'll ride around. Like this one, we kind of parked it like there was nobody in the spots immediately connecting us and we got kind of yeah. far away. And they had this like little pool with the tiki bar and the lazy river, which is what all these RV resorts are going to now. So we would we would ride around. Like one mile one morning we rode like 10 miles around this like gravel. And then she stopped and I kept going. I was like, I think I want to hit 10 miles. So we hit I, you know, it's 10 miles. And we really, you know, we left for a few miles out on this little parkway trail. But we rode all around the the camper campground many times. And holy crap, it's just Wrangler after Wrangler after Wrangler behind these Class A's. Oh, yeah. It's gotten really, really popular. And what I've noticed within that is that a ton of them are uh, four by E's. Yeah. And... I don't know what it was about down there too. Even the ones that I saw just driving around Hilton Head and we went into Savannah too. And it was a ton of, I, I would say it was almost a third, which is a very, very high number. Mm -hmm. um, it was almost a third of them were four by E's. And I'm like, yeah, I took some crap. I think I mentioned this a few episodes ago. I took some crap in a Facebook group a while back for saying that that was kind of the way that I think, whether you agree with it or not, um, I, I want I want displacement, but you know they don't care what I want. I think that's the way. I still think that's the way that this is going. I think that we're going to have to figure out a way in off road. We're going to have to figure out a way to do it within the um, within the world of electrical. I don't know what I don't know what your thoughts on that, but I just see it more and more. I think it's it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it's it's we're going to see more of it. Um, Hilton Head area doesn't surprise me that it is. Hilton Head is a um, Historic is a very eco conscious, eco friendly area. Oh, yeah. Um, like you're not allowed to build higher than I want to say you're not allowed to build higher than your tallest tree on property. Business signs have to blend in with the landscaping. Um, building color has to blend in mm -hmm. with landscaping. So you can't have bright mm -hmm. colored buildings. So unlike Myrtle Beach and <clears throat> or like Daytona or somewhere else that a lot of Jeepers go to on the East Coast, Hilton Head is very subdued. So it doesn't surprise me that you see a lot of four by E's there. Uh, but speaking of of electrification of, of the off-road stuff, um, I actually saw an article, I want to say this past week, um, hinting that the Jeep Recon might be coming sooner than we think. Yeah, um, I saw that too. So yeah. I, think I think that's I saw something I want to... on Instagram or something. Yeah, yeah. I think it was just an article linked on Facebook, clicked into it, and... Um, I think that's uh, something I really want to discuss today, and I'm glad we're hitting on this already. Um, just electric vehicles in the off-road industry, and if, if that is the future, or if, if not, or like what's the downside to them, and what's the positives, and you've got a 4 by e uh, My wife and I have a 4 by e so we kind of have some some good feeling on this now. We've got, I want to say, we've got probably almost 20,000 miles under, uh, under Brittany's 4 by e already. So uh, without further ado, I think let's just jump right into that for the day. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get this going. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. <laughs> Let's get electrified. 
<laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, this week we are going to start talking about some electric vehicles, uh, not just Jeeps, and uh, the future of off-roading and, and how things are shaping up now. Uh, Doug, let's kind of just dive right into it. Um, so we're talking about the Jeep Recon, which I don't think is going to be a Wrangler replacement. That was hinted at first, was that the next generation was going to be called to move from the Wrangler to the Recon. I don't think that's the case now. I think that's going to be a model probably offered alongside of the Wrangler. And um, part of me thinks it's 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 a what the Cherokee should have been uh, and, and fits, you know, in between the Grand Cherokee and uh, the Wrangler. It uh, I think it's going to be made to compete with that new Tesla Brongler, right? Bron- Bronkler, Brongler, Brongler. <laughs> We're going to call it that. <laughs> it's not a thing. <laughs> I promise. I promise. There's no. There's no alcohol in this coffee cup. Um, <laughs> I I agree with the with the the uh, the prognostication on what the Cherokee should have been. That was a weird car. I don't know. I maybe it served mm-hmm. a purpose. I don't know. I you know looking at the recon. I mean, you see, you know, you see the concept drawings, or I'm sure it'll look somewhat more mainstream i guess mm-hmm. um but yeah it just looks like the tougher version of the at least from a size wise it's not going to be wrangler size it's not even going to be um grand cherokee size uh, but of course it'll be electrified and it may only be i think i want to say that article i mean i don't think it's i don't think there's going to be a sole gas only uh, recon. I don't think that's going to be a thing. No, that's not not hinted at. It's going to be full electric. Um, yeah. Which oddly enough, um, Jeep. This has not been hinted at. Jeep has actually posted this on their social media. The um, the Wagoneer S. Um, yeah, it's built on the too. same chassis that the Grand Cherokee L is built on, uh, except it's it got all the luxury features of a Wagoneer, and that is also uh, fully electric. And when I saw that, I was like, wait, was this what the recon was supposed to be? Um, but no, the recon is actually a totally different vehicle. So it looks like we're going to have two uh, full electric vehicles coming from Jeep that are supposedly very off-road friendly, which is um, Insert Wagoneer S release video here. <laughs> if you want to actually look at an electric vehicle and be like, holy crap, that's freaking mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. They, part of the release video is this thing on like a drag strip. It's yeah. pretty it is pretty dang nasty. Now, let me let me fully qualify these remarks on electric vehicles. I am not a massive electric vehicle fan. I'm just not. Right. Um my my concerns for electric are are many and they are wide. I you know, can our electrical grid handle it? I get all of that where where the haters on the electric vehicles. I get it. I hear you and and for the most part I I I agree with you. Like I don't know how, you know, the grid that we have now is supports three to four to five times more electric vehicles than we have now. I, I don't know that that's a possibility. I I also understand that when you go to these electric charging stations, what's making them go? Big old diesel generators. I hear right. all of that. I do. I get it. I 100% get it. Um I also see the other side where it's okay, yeah, all of that's true, but the offset I'm not here to talk about the politics of it or is yeah. it right or wrong, but you'd be, you've, or you are quite the fool to think that it is not going that way. Now, in 30 years, does it change? And people are like, oh my God, we were all wrong. Maybe, I don't know. Who knows? Right. But for right now, um, the market's going electrified, either full on electrified or it's going hybrid. And we would all do well to just deal with it. And that's what we're doing here. We, we're realistic. At the end of the day, you got to be realistic about it. You know it's coming. You know it's happening. So, you know, why not, you know, try to find the silver lining? And the silver lining in some of these or some of these cars, some of these electric vehicles are pretty freaking cool. Yeah. And and our job at Outlaw Off-Road is, is to make what you have cooler. Um, and I've, that's kind of the – I've been on the same train as you on that. I'm not really an, an electric vehicle activist. Um, I don't – it doesn't bother me one way or the other. Uh, Brittany's Jeep is certainly very fun to drive. Um, Ryan from uh, Outlaw for Atlanta actually just spent the weekend uh, with Brittany and I uh, with for Brittany's birthday. And we hopped in the uh, the 4 e and he was like, God, this thing is just so quick. He's like, and it's quiet. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's fun. Uh, and then he started looking around at it too. And he was like, man, just a small lift in 35s. He's like, this looks perfect. He's like, this is awesome. 
And so I kind of, my mindset is not to dog it one way or the other. It's not my responsibility to figure out the power grid situation. Uh, it's my job to figure out how to make vehicles cooler and uh, make other people think that's really cool. And um, if as long as there are modifications possible, then we're going to make anything that comes out cooler, um, which kind of leads me to the next point of here. Like we've got the recon, we've got the Wrangler, or I'm sorry, the Wagoneer S. Um, we've already got the, the 4 by e Wrangler um, and a Grand Cherokee. And do you think that a it's not too far to think about a, a 4 by e Gladiator coming out soon? Hmm. Man. Um, my gut says no. Um, I just don't. I don't see it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I haven't heard. I mean, I've heard people on Facebook groups say, oh, we're going to I haven't heard anybody that actually matters say that that's a thing. Now, that being said, they kept the 392 under wraps for years. Right. And it was rumors and, and whispers for years until it was actually, until it was, there was nothing for real people that indicated it was coming. Um, Even hopes and when dreams. it did come out, everyone's like, no, that's not real. <laughs> right, right. So <laughs> could it be that way? Sure. Yeah, sure it mm -hmm. could. Um, do I think it's going to happen? I, I don't. I don't think. I think the one thing that would change my mind on that is if the new battery that I've heard about actually shows up. Mm -hmm. That is both. Uh, it's It does all the things. It's faster to charge. It has more of a charge and it lasts longer because the Gladiator is the more weight. The Gladiator has the bigger tow rating. You know, it was kind of the problem why you don't see a lot of F-150 Lightnings on the road. When, right. when what's his name, the CEO took it across the country and he's like, oh, crap, y'all were right. <laughs> like, this is not as good as this is not as good as we made it out to be. As soon yeah. as you hooked up something to it and made it do truck things, um, you know, you could watch you could watch the charge gauge drop faster than the fuel gauge on a on a Grand Cherokee. Like, well, let's just be on then on an XJ with a 4.0. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it was bad. It was really bad. Even though, you know, getting in the truck, super nice. Mm -hmm. The looks of the truck, didn't like it at first. It grew on me. I kind of like it now for an electrified vehicle. Um, so I, I think that probably has something to do with it. So I think unless there are other things that happen first, um, I don't think you're going to see it in a JT until that happens. So that okay. current 2.0 hybrid, it's not going to be an EV for sure. Mm -hmm. It could be, it could be a plug-in hybrid, but only if there are big improvements to the uh, the battery systems that Jeep currently has in place. Which I have heard that is a thing. I've actually mm -hmm. gone, I've actually heard it already down the pike so far that they know when they're releasing it in the four by e Wrangler. So yeah. if that happens, and it's like multiples of the range, so I think if that happens, maybe keep your eyes on the horizon for a Gladiator. But until then, I, I wouldn't even. I would caution people. I wouldn't even discuss it because you're just not going to look that smart. Yeah, no, I, I think I agree. I think the biggest downfall for for an electric vehicle in that category is tow, tow ability and tow rating. Um, we've seen it with a couple of Rivians, um, Teslas, the Cybertruck, and a few others. Like once you put something behind that, the the electric capability just kind of really goes down fast. Um, especially with anything with actual weight behind it. So, no, I agree. I do think it's really cool that, um, oh, what's some Greg Henderson, the uh, the two-door, well, it was a four-door JL that they turned into a two-door truck that was 4 by e and they called it the Gladiator 4 Oh, you mean Greg, Greg, the uh, battle kilt Henderson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. thing was really cool. Battle I know kilt. that's that's yeah. gone to several events around the country. So if you get a chance to check that out, that's that's really cool. But that's a complete one-off custom, yep. like from yep. the mind of which Greg is what Greg does. <laughs> what he does. Yeah, that's that's what he does. That's exactly what he does. Um, yeah, the YJL and all he does crazy stuff, yeah. cool stuff, one, wonderful stuff, stuff. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, you know that that was in my head when I was thinking if mm -hmm. maybe possibly Jeep could go towards a Gladiator, but. Uh, no, I agree with you. The the tow capacity and doing truck things is is kind of the downfall of that. Yeah. Um, and I don't think someone's gonna buy a truck that can't do truck things. If you want that, just get a Honda Ridgeline. I mean, why? Are they, I mean, people are some people are doing <laughs> it. Um, I mean, Cybertruck is selling, um, but I think it's selling because it's a Tesla, not because you know a lot of people are buying it. You know, it's kind of a look at me thing. There, there's there's several mm -hmm. reasons for Cybertruck's quote unquote success. Um, but to do anything with a Jeep badge on it, you have to have it appeal to the people that are already Jeep loyalists. 
Yeah. Um, and I think if you put that 2.0 hybrid in a Gladiator now, you would absolutely get totally just murdered from a marketing standpoint. But again, if they do the different battery pack, maybe. But, you know, Cybertruck's different. The other one, um, I, I guess it's kind of a truck, the uh, the Hummer EV. Mm -hmm. um, kind of same thing, four-door with a bed. But again, it's different. Um, it's, it's full EV. It's not a hybrid. Um, but it looks... Like to me, if I was gonna go out and buy an EV truck, um, that that would that and the Lightning would be top of the list for me, and and I would probably lean Hummer EV. Mm -hmm. Now I would be buying it because I like trucks. I would not be buying it to go out and tow stuff. I'm not. Right. I have no intentions on getting that and then pulling my boat behind it, you know, for a hundred miles or whatever. Maybe locally, um, yeah. But I do. I think you know, does EV have its place in that market? Yeah. I mean, the average person does not drive as much as I do. I know that. I'm not the average driver. I put more miles on my vehicle than, than the average person does. So I think if you, if you live in your town, you work in your town, your commute is 10 to 15 miles or, or even less in a lot of circumstances, and the most you're going to do on the weekend is maybe, you know, go camping at your local campground, or you're going to go to Lowe's, or you're going to go to Target, or you're going to go, you know, do some stuff in town, and you've got the ability to, like, you know, here locally where I'm at, we can actually get Duke Energy, who's our power provider here, because uh, I'm going to do this. Duke Energy will pay up to 1200 I think, to put a level two charger at your house. Mm -hmm. The only thing they don't cover is the purchase of the actual charger. So I can go out and spend 400 bucks on a charger. And I can have a level two charger at the house. Now I'm still paying for that and I don't have a level two charger at home. So I don't, I'm not really that great of an EV customer. I do have a level one charger for the four by E. However, now we flip the, we flip the script a little bit. My wife, same house. We wouldn't need a level two charger at the house. She works at a university. Mm -hmm. The university has free EV charging stations all over campus. Yeah. She could go park. I think they're actually putting EV chargers in the parking deck that she prefers to use. It's closest to her office. So if they did that, she could literally buy an EV. Uh, and there's more, and we'll mention off some of the other ones. Um, one of the other big ones is uh, the Rivian. Uh, oh, yeah. The R1T, which is the truck, and the R1S, which is the SUV. She is falling in love with an R1S and wants it wants one bad. But for her, from a financial standpoint, she could, with the range of that thing, and given when we travel, we're generally traveling long distances with our camper, which is on the back of my truck. Mm -hmm. It would be very, it's very feasible to say that she could go out and buy an R1S or she could go buy a Wagoneer S. It's not, doesn't need to do truck things. Mm -hmm. um, the lowest it's going to do is haul the kids hockey equipment around, right? And maybe a couple of mountain bikes or something. And she would never have to pay for gas. And it's very feasible that she would not have to pay for power either. Yeah. Um, or maybe a rare occasion when she's on vacation or something, we take it, something like that. But 90 plus percent of the time, she could get that free charge at the station that's being paid for by the university. And I get it, paid for by my tax. I get all of that stuff, guys. I get it. I get the people. It is, it, nothing's free. Yes, I know. I get it. But all politics is local. So is all finances. <laughs> finances. Yeah. You know, but, you know, my, my local finances are my bank account. If I'm not paying fuel out of it, I mean, it's going to happen. Somebody's going to do it. It's in their budget to do it. Um, you know, why would we not? Why would why would I not say, you know, hey, dear, go ahead and take advantage Just of that. Take advantage of it. And um, you can buy a vehicle, get the tax write off and then yeah. have the benefit of not. I mean, you're talking thousands of dollars a year mm -hmm. that you're not spending on fuel. Yeah. Right. Like and I can think of a lot of places to put that money for my oh, family. Yeah. And so I get it. I totally get it. Is it, am I going to run out and buy one? No. Am I going to stop my wife from running out and buying one? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, it's it, funny it, that you, you mentioned know. that though, because that's exactly the situation that we're in with Brittany's four by E. And now again, this is a hybrid. Um, so we do use gas occasionally, um, but running to like where the closest town to us is Mooresville. Uh, North Carolina, but there's a massive target. There's restaurants, everything there running there and back for groceries. We don't use gas. Um, yeah. We have a level one charger at the house. She works for a bank in Charlotte. Uh, name will be undisclosed, <laughs> but they did recently install um, fast chargers at, in their parking decks. And if she gets there early enough, 
she can easily swoop in, grab a charger, and it charges that Jeep in an hour. Yeah. Whereas those the level, level two one charger fast yeah. on those four by E's. And some of those are level three chargers, not the Tesla supercharger, but they're level three. Um, mm-hmm. So they're even faster than level two. I thought a four by E wouldn't it, take a level a three. It won't. Um, I didn't. It, okay, I didn't lim- think it would. Four by E's limited to level two. I'm just saying for the sake yeah. of electricity. It's, if you there, had there all these other threes. vehicles mm-hmm. we're talking about, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it takes you know nine ten hours to charge level one at the house. We charge overnight off peak hours. It's we've not even noticed a dent in the electric bill because of it, honestly. Um, but yeah, she'll go to work, and she spaces everything out accordingly, and, and she'll top off or recharge at work and come home, and um, it's cut down on the gas like significantly. And I can only imagine a full electric vehicle, what we what we'd be able to do with that. Um, like you said, she could almost exclusively charge at work and then run around for the entire week just on that. Um, and it, that just offsets itself. And I, we've looked at some Rivians as well. We've looked at the Grand or the Wagoneer S. I I personally love the the Rivian, the R1S and the R1T. Absolutely love them. I need to uh, get if I an were R1S. to she uh, loves the outside if I were to oh yeah, and that the uh, I think the Closest color I can relate to it is called Calvary Blue by Toyota. Yep. Um, yep. It's that blue with the yellow brake. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. I love it. I love it. I love yeah, it. And, that's um, the color she likes, too. I would. I would. If I were in the vehicle for a full electric vehicle, I think that's what I would go with. But like you, um, the Grand Cherokee is is our road trip vehicle because uh, you get 550 miles to a tank of gas on the thing. It's a stupid good gas mileage. In it, and um, it's more comfortable. So we, we bring the Grand Cherokee with us. So we don't. If she wants to get an electric vehicle, like that's totally fine. Like I'm totally I'm all fine. for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, when you're only driving yours to go to and from, you know, a shop here and there, mm-hmm. and then going on road trips, literally everything else is in your Waggy S or or your R one S or whatever. I mean, I can see it making sense for a lot of people, and mm-hmm. um, I, you know, I don't, I, I can't say that I, I disagree with it. I mean, more and more, you know, every once in a while, it's it's really hard to see where it's going, right? Because then you'll see mm-hmm. the articles come out online, and you're like, no, oh, this this company is going to pull out of the EV market because the EV market sucks, and then you just see, like, five new models released. <laughs> so I think it was uh, – I think it actually is Rivian that a couple months ago said they were coming out with a couple new um, a couple new models. Yeah, I would. I would love to smaller. see. It. I think they're yeah. smaller. Yeah, uh, very smaller models. But Rivian's teamed up with Amazon. I don't know if you've noticed in your area, mm-hmm. um, but around us, um, there are full electric Amazon trucks that are powered by Rivian. Um, so that's, and there's that other company. Just, is it is it Pebble or there's some other electric company another one. Mm-hmm. that only builds for Amazon? Like they yeah. they they started to build Amazon vans. They got the weird yeah. circle headlights. Um, mm-hmm. But it's Rivian and then this other company. Yeah. Um, which, you know, is trying to do that. And then I've seen a, um, there's an Indian electric car company that just recently opened a dealership near us. They have not gotten stock yet, but they did open up a dealership. And then you've got, but then you've got companies like Fisker who can't make any money and they're probably bankrupt. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then well, who knows what happens to Tesla with the carbon credits and the buying and all that's going, it's going to be very interesting to see where yeah. the EV market goes in the next few years. It is. Um, and maybe Definitely we're not talking about if, EVs in five years. Maybe we're talking about all. Right. Who knows? Maybe tune in in five years to find out what we're talking about with electric vehicles. <laughs> Episode nine hundred and forty-two of Dirty Dots. <laughs> like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when we release our EV, our twenty twenty-nine EV episode. Exactly. Exactly. Now I will say that. Um, when we took advantage of the four by E, there there was definitely still a tax credit. I want to say it was like a seventy five hundred dollar tax credit. I don't know if that's still going on, um, but that's something to consider too. Um, you do get a tax credit for that, and that that helps at the end of the year. Um, if you're if you're someone that either you know, likes to hold off and, and pay in all at one time, or you know if you own a business, um, those things do add up. So something to consider. Uh, if if it's not that big of a deal to you, then yeah, it's not that big of a deal. But I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. Like I said, we mentioned a few others. I'm just going to name off a rattle rattle off a couple that I've I've noted that we have that are full electric. Um, so we got the Wagoneer S, we got mm-hmm. Cybertruck, Hummer EV, Rivian, F-150 Lightning. Are there any other ones that you can think of that are more tailored or geared towards the off-road community that are full electric? No, Bronco. I mean, Bronco hasn't come out with a hybrid yet. They haven't made a full They don't have a hybrid Bronco. No. Um, no I could see it happening, I though. 
Uh, yeah, but I think it's a little weird that they haven't, like, but they don't really have. I'm trying to think of all the models because they got really out of cars completely. They've got the Mach mm-hmm. E, but that's full mm-hmm. EV. Yep. They don't really have a plug in hybrid, do they? No. No, they don't. They've got the Not Lightning that's knowledge. full yeah. E, that's full EV. The Mach E, that's full EV. I don't know that Ford has a plug in hybrid powertrain. I could see it happening with the Bronco Sport first before it goes to Bronco. Yeah, yeah, uh, I could see that. But if it's in Bronco, if it's already in Wrangler, we're sitting here talking about could it go to JT. I wonder now why Ford hasn't, they didn't even talk hmm. about it. I haven't even heard it talked about Yeah. now that I think about it. And then now that I think about it even more, um, and no, everyone listening, this was not scripted. I totally did not even think about a Bronco with a, with a plug-in hybrid. But now I'm like, why? They have the four-cylinder. It's a proven platform. It's a proven engine, just like the two. They have that two three, huh? Hey Ford, if you're watching, <laughs> <laughs> hey we'll do, we'll do some dis- Yo, construction testing for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. then you think about it when we're talking about plug-in hybrids and we're talking about the Wrangler right now, at least this generation of battery. I mean, hyper mileaging the thing is twenty six to thirty. Yeah, like that's as much as you're going to get. But then we start talking about you know, Rivian R1, you know, Cybertruck, these full EVs, their standard motors are well above 200 and their optioned motors are well over 300 mile range. Now that's all things being, you know, all conditions. I get all that. Weather changes things, temperature changes things. I get all that. But, you know, when we're talking about prime mileage for a Wrangler, all those things have to be right too. So you're talking about a 10 to one, at least eight to one factor a full EV versus plug-in hybrid. So maybe there's, maybe they're just holding off to announce the Bronco EV. I don't know. I could see that. I mean, they've I got it. See. They've got the powertrain in the Mach-E, and the thing's nasty. Mm-hmm. That's not an off-road vehicle. And no, they've got but. that powertrain. They've got that same powertrain. I don't know about fitment, but I'd be interested. Could you slap that powertrain from the Ford Lightning into a Bronco, and you've now got a Bronco Lightning? That'd be cool. Speaking I'm of the, just the Ford Lightning, did you did you see the uh, the video and the the Lightning that Von Gittin Jr. built with RTR? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I saw like a short of it on Instagram, and I was like, "What the hell?" Yeah. And then he, I went to the, the the bigger video. That's he stupid. does he does Baja truck things with that, and it's yeah. it's pretty awesome. Have you seen the Baja Cybertruck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> except it's sick. not a it's not a real cyber truck. It's, it's not, uh, but it certainly looks like it. It, it is looks so like cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I first saw it, I was like, "There's no way in hell someone's already done this." Uh, and sure, not it was a no. it was a trophy truck body that they cat cad filed up some panels to look like the cyber truck and put it on. However, so cool. um, uh, the diesel guys, uh, Heavy D, and some of the other guys, they brother, uh, they Rick bro or whatever his name is, yeah, Diesel Brothers yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, they did build a cyber truck and lifted it and they brought it to King of the Hammers. It, it skated around a little bit and there has been some marketing on it. I don't know if that's dead yet or not, but I know it was not in good condition. <laughs> the last video they showed was shocker. <laughs> Suddenly it dropped off the face of the earth and, uh, I have not seen video since like they January this year. February. And half. Yeah. No, and those they guys, but, uh, well, I, but, I thought it was funny. They took that. I mean, because the first time I saw that Cybertruck trophy truck video, it was like flying down this hillside. And I'm like, the hell no is way. that? And I didn't see that. I didn't have sound. It was just on like, you know, a reel playing on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And then I turned the sound on and it's you know, like that. <laughs> but then a couple of days later, I saw where yeah. somebody took that video and insert like a zzz sound over the <laughs> <Yeah>. engine. <laughs> so you hear the video background and then all you hear is zzz. I'm like. No, that's not right. I remember that's hearing not this. Right, but it's, it's it was hilarious. a pretty good edit, but it was more for funny than anything else. But yeah, that thing was it. It was just panels. It wasn't a real cyber truck, everybody. But yeah, it looks but it looks, <laughs> looks damn freaking cool awesome. It. Like this is yeah. how cyber truck should look. Exactly. Elon, nasty. if you're listening to this, I know you're not. Seriously, bring your cyber truck to Baja. <laughs> <laughs> Make it proven. I bet you'll be one. I mean, there's an electric class at Hammers. Yeah. I, is, I don't think we're too. I don't think we're too far off now that the only electric vehicle that competes in that falls apart, and it's. I think it actually caught on fire a couple months ago. Um, but yeah, I'm actually. Right. I'm. I'm really interested to see what. Um, what manufacturers decide that they want to uh, t- 
test their stuff out at Hammers because it's just a desert loop. It's nothing like rocks are super intensive. It's just a desert loop. And I feel like some. Yeah, of these- but I don't know, man. I, I get that it's just a desert loop. That's not smooth. No, I know it's not. <laughs> um, especially after um, the actual desert challenge takes place that that weekend mm-hmm. before KOH. It ruts it those, out pretty bad. Those whoops get squared off and the trails, the, the, the little, you know, the one or two sections you actually have some trail just get gnarlied out. Mm-hmm. Everything gets, gets squared off. It gets, it gets pretty nasty. And, you know, yes, we, you know, as race cars, race cars have suspensions that are, that are built for that. Um, but I don't know. I just don't know how a battery pack would, I don't know of a battery pack that could take that abuse. We haven't seen one do it yet. Uh, we've but seen some it, people throw one at it, but I haven't yeah. seen anybody. I haven't seen anybody successful at it. Right. Now, it would not surprise tough. me if Vaughn took that lightning and ran the Desert Challenge with some a roll cage and some upgrades in it. I don't think that's the driver we want to put in an EV. I think he would break it. <laughs> we need to put somebody who's not used to absolutely barrel racing a 4,400 car. You know, put some guy in there, like, put a 4,600 driver in there. Let's put, like, mm-hmm. let's put, like, Tom Biddle in there. Or I mean, I would have Vaughn used is to have a 4,600 Sergio. driver, too. I would have used to have said, let's put Sergio in there because I just, you know, worshipped his driving skills. Um, But then he took 4655 out on its first two missions and and rolled it. So we're going to. That thing is. It's not all. It was not his fault. That that thing has some electrical. I'm a little sad about that one. (laughs) um, Well, I don't know. They did. They took 4655 because Sergio took my co driver. um, And they went to the. It's not an Ultra 4 race. They went up to Reading, uh, PA this past weekend, mm-hmm. and we're going to run the endurance race. So I saw a couple race. of Facebook posts from Rob, Rob Craven, who's my co-driver in 4699 normally. Um, and But then I didn't see him post anything. I haven't talked to him because Sergio messaged me. He goes, hey, are you going to race in PA? I was like, no, nah, the car's not even – car's not even – we're shooting for um, Crandon, so we're working on the car. And he said, well, good, I'm going to steal your co-driver. <laughs> <laughs> all right and so i know they were running because he was doing some facebook live stuff there when they had some cell signal but uh i don't know i didn't see where they finished i don't know i'll have to, I'll have to find out about yeah, that yeah i'm not sure we'll have to dig I'll into that text, Rob. but uh this kind of leads me into the next thing I'd, I'd like to talk about um going from the future and the technology of vehicles for the off-road but now i kind of want to talk about the the future of technology in off-road um, cause there's a lot of really cool stuff coming to market now that is, is, is pretty high end, high tech. We're talking live valve shocks, portal axles. Um, there's now a touch, a radio touch system that controls like an S pod or something you can hook lights into. Like there's a lot of stuff to do. Like you can control your lockers off of your radio screen now, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. And I know we were talking recently about, running a uh, GPS on CarPlay and how we thought that was cool. But like what, where, where does the technology fall with off-road stuff? And uh, where do you think it's going to go? I mean, I think with the, with the addition of time, everything changes. So mm-hmm. yeah, you've got that. My, I think it's part of the maestro system as an upgrade. You can use a module and you can, can now can control lights from certain head units. And I think that's part of the maestro system. Um, that's that I have not done that in a vehicle. Um, just for no other reason, I haven't had reason to yet. Uh, I had aux switches in the four by E, and of course, I have an S spot on the race car. The race car is a lot different than you know putting a cool aftermarket head unit in your in your Wrangler or your F one fifty or whatever. Um, but when you look at yes, you've got stuff like that. I mean, you've got you've got systems that auto park cars. You've got adaptive cruise. It's not that far of a. It's not that far flung to go, well, how do we apply this to, like, are we going to have a Wrangler that off-roads itself? That's kind of where my head was going. Right. Honestly. Like, I, I don't want to do that. Like, the purist is going to go, no, absolutely, that's sacrilegious. But, I mean, the JL did so good because it brought in a market that had never thought, huh, I'm going to buy a Wrangler. You know, the JK got people thinking about it, but then you got in mm-hmm. a JK and it was like, it was like when you get in a, a, a 2023 Toyota and it still looked like it looked in 05. Exactly. Or when you got in a 2022 Chevy truck and it still looked like it did 10 years. Before that, people got in it, they're like, well, dang, I thought I liked this four-door thing, but I get in it, it's a piece of crap. I don't like it. I don't like the way it rides. It rides like a Jeep. 
which for people that have Jeeps, we're used to that. It's not that big of a deal. But for people that were coming from an Explorer or a Forerunner or something else, they got in a solid XL vehicle and they're like, I don't know what to think about this. So they just didn't like it. The JL changed a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it made it nice inside. And, you know, Jeep got their crap together and like, oh, okay, we got to, we can't just give them four doors and, um, and expect they're just going to buy our vehicle. So they did that with the Wrangler and it brought in a whole new market that could do that. So would I approve of a self driving off road vehicle? No, of course not. <laughs> Right. Could it happen? It could absolutely happen, people. Well, I mean, we've already I mean, it seen It doesn't take much to look at the radar systems they have, the throttle control system they have, the auto park system. All this could be done. 80% of the technology that would be needed to do it is already there. Yeah. Um, I don't know how affordable it would be, what kind of option that would be, but, I mean, the technology is there to do it. Mm-hmm. So you got to think that somebody somewhere – is probably working on it to basically just make somewhere. it an off-road ride where you can just mm-hmm. kind of sit there and go, hmm, trees. Hmm, well, I mean, rocks. and you look at Toyota. Toyota's had this since 2016 on the TRD Pro models. Um, you've got a one-touch button that it's, a, it's an ABS feature, but can get you out of sand. Can mm-hmm. I forget what the feature is called, um, but I've seen that do some really cool stuff on the rocks. Mercedes um, has it, and Mercedes has it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can do zero turn stuff in, in like the Mercedes and, and the Hummer EV is crab walking and has an, an mm-hmm. extremely low range. Uh, I don't think it's far fetched to see some of that stuff coming, especially with you seeing more implementation of live 3D mapping, uh, radar mapping, yep. um, using that for. Well, it's not being used, obviously, in off road implementation right now, but Yet. it's being used. Um, you've got. You just got some really, really cool stuff. Like, I don't think it's too far fetched to say, okay, well, I don't feel comfortable with this this rock face. Let me pull up my 3D map and hit, you know, auto crawl. And I mean, yes, it's cheating, whatever. But well, think about it. You, you just know. thought, I mean, there's two different ways to look at that. Way number one is auto driving easy trails. Mm-hmm. It's not that far fetched to think I could go to a trailhead that's already on. I mean, most of these trails you hit now are on Google Maps. They're on Onyx Off-Road, mm-hmm. especially the new Onyx Backcountry. Yep. Um, they're on all of these apps. So these these trails have been mapped. And a lot of these trails, municipalities, park owners, all that, have continually made a lot of these greens more green. And a lot of these blues less blue. Now, by and large, the really ruddy, nasty, gnarly stuff they leave alone, and that, okay, that's fine. But it's not that hard to think that you could go to an easy trail that's, that's very lightly obstacled or not obstacled, you hit a button, that thing is mapping in front of itself, and it's turning and it's going that, and you're just basically a tourist looking through the woods. It's not that hard to see that coming. The second piece of that would be some sort of a assist feature that could maybe map out lines or it could tell you, you know, it wouldn't be very hard to go, okay, well, because I can map this, I know that rock is at this angle this far away and that rock is here. Try to put your driver tire here and it's going to – you know, with distances on it, because with the human eye, we can kind of map that out. Um, but that's a lot of the part that we've talked about before with skill and spotting is knowing that stuff. And a computer, AI, you know, we talk about artificial intelligence, AI could do that in a nanosecond mm-hmm. and could and could 3D map out stuff and go, well, don't go here. You're probably going to roll over because it knows. And it does all these thousands and thousands and thousands of calculations like that. Pretty and quick. it can tell you, hey, don't go that way dummy and it could be kind of your spotter i mean how hard would it be to put sensors and cameras all around the vehicles my truck has 11 freaking cameras on it already Mm -hmm. yeah it's not that hard and it knows it has parking sensors it knows when stuff's there it's not that difficult to think that that could be somehow modified to apply to the off-road world to get more people to the off-road now i get that that could cause more problems with you know trail condition i get all of that i get all of that Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that some company is not going to build that system and sell it if they think they can sell it. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you look at stuff that's already been implemented that we didn't think would come for a long time. And now it's being it's not just being implemented, but implementing in racing. You look at um, con- computer controlled live valve shocks. Yeah. Um, this is a shock system that is actively reading the terrain and and studying your your rebound and your compression and the shock and adjusting for how hard it's hitting right there on the spot like you don't even have to make adjustments to it it started off with you could hit a button a couple times and 
actually it started off with physical dials <laughs> physical dials, which are still or if we want to go further back the, than that yeah if we want to go further back than that you had to manually release pressure yeah, yeah you had to manually release pressure but then that turned into physical dials that turned into buttons with a compressor system and now we are seeing all of it computer controlled that a driver doesn't have to do anything um except drive right. AI um, does it. It's AI control. so yeah where do you uh, do you see more of that kind of stuff being implemented in in racing or in, in like the higher spectrum of off road or do you think it's going to cap out? Uh, oh, I absolutely see it. I absolutely see it coming to racing. Um, depending on class, I think there is. Um, as we release this video, I'll go back. So yesterday, uh, we're releasing this video Friday the second. So Thursday the first, um, there was a meeting in the forty six hundred class about some stuff like this with allowing like internal bypass, not live valve yet, um, but internal bypass. I mean, depending on how they write the rule, there are those discussions being had now. And depending on how you write the rule, you could see a lot. Yeah, I could see live valve in the 4600 because there are vehicles that come with that now. Um, the Raptor, the Raptor is the one that comes to mind. It's live valve. Um, the ZR2 system in Chevy trucks, spool valve. Um, mm -hmm. you've got those different Bilstein shocks in the TRX. So everybody's got some form of this adaptive valving system. I, th I think there's more promise in the live valving just because live valving has already made the jump to more off-road stuff. Uh, it's made the jump to, uh, endurance mountain bike racing. Mm -hmm. It's made the jump to, um, downhill mountain bike racing with, and actually the Fox live valve. There are Fox live valve shocks. Um, on mountain bikes, downhill bikes, endurance bikes, all that kind of stuff. There is another company called Rock Shocks, which is big in the um, mountain bike world. They have a system called Flight Attendant, which is basically it's an AI-powered onboard system in each shock that's powered by a little battery. And you just plug your battery in before you go ride. It's very lightweight. It doesn't weigh a lot. But it's, it's live valving. I think the Fox system probably shows the most promise for mainstream use because um, it's been around now longer than people think it's been around pr mass production wise for f three or four years, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and in technology standards, that's might as well be 10 years. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's so coming fast. and now they're putting it in, you know, Lauren's car that started this season was, mm -hmm. uh, IFS, IRS, live valve front, live valve rear. That's mm -hmm. not the car he ran at every race, but it was what he ran at hammers. It was, you know, that was four corner independent live valve. And, you know, you think about that, applying it to what we just talked about. If you buy a car that now can go kind of off-road on its own, not extreme, it's not going to go climb Cleveland Rock in Colorado, right. but it could absolutely hit your local off-road trail, that the shocks then can valve themselves differently for off-road and change the way you're riding. And then when you get back on the road, it goes back into on-road mode, changes the valving on the shocks again, and off you go home. Um, the possibilities, man, if you can imagine it, it's crazy. Like, I don't know that all of it's good. <laughs> I certainly don't know that all of it's bad, um, right? But it, it's something along these lines is gonna happen. Like what we have in twenty twenty four right now is not gonna be exactly what we have five years from now in twenty twenty nine. It's just not gonna be a thing. So why not have some fun and talk about it and guess at what we're gonna have and prognosticate? And isn't that why we have a podcast anyway? Like exactly guesses. And then a year from now we'll <laughs> do that. What's that? The segment on Colin Coward's show where Colin was right. Where Colin was wrong. Maybe we'll do a where Doug was right, where Doug was wrong segment. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we can always um, go cool back to and think about this kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah and it's I think super it's just, cool to think about this. More so, I think it's cool that we look at this with an open mind and say, look, you don't have to agree with it, but you have to understand where technology is going and where the industry is going and position yourself to be in front of that. Because I don't want to be on the tail end of that. I want to be in front of it and reading every article I can, reading everything we can. We get any information we can so they know, okay, here's what's coming. This We either need to get on board to buy one of these and test it out, or we need to figure out which companies are going to have product for this. Because um, I definitely want, don't want to be on the tail end of this. And the people who, I don't want to call them non-believers, but it's inevitable. It, it is coming no matter how much you like it or dislike it. It, it's going to happen. And I think the best thing we can do as one, a company being outlaw off road is to position ourselves to, to make the coolest shit possible that we can with that. And, uh, two, just to, as far as this podcast goes, just to stay on top of it. And, um, maybe we are wrong and maybe we come out with an episode in a year saying, Hey, we were, we were wrong. 
Uh, maybe we come out with an episode that says we were 100% right, and I'm fine with either one. Something. I mean, it's. I don't think we'll be 100% right. I don't think we'll be 100% wrong, but... I mean, you can either, like you said, be on be on the forefront of it. I mean, on the off on the shop retail side, we owe the customers and the industry that to be on the cutting edge and to be out there and know what's going on, so mm -hmm. that we can have these conversations. And on the podcast side, obviously, we're here to talk about that stuff. Um, but on a personal note, you can either admit, like you said, it's coming, and just deal with it and figure out, you know. Maybe I jump on the train, maybe I don't, whatever. Or you can be the old guy sitting on the front porch going, get off my lawn. Um, certainly things in my life, there's times that I don't have a problem being the old curmudgeon sitting on the porch going, get off my lawn. But I think with this, especially when it comes to vehicle fun, which I am known to partake in from time to time, you might as well just at least educate yourself on it. And I don't know, maybe some of it comes to pass, maybe some of it doesn't. Like you said, well... A couple of years from now, we'll have an episode where we'll highlight what we said was wrong. We'll highlight what we said was right. And right. there'll probably be some of each, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, moving off that, yeah. I think we're running out no of doubt. a little bit of time. I don't have any mailbag questions today, um, but I do want to remind you everyone. slacker. I know. I Dude, didn't. Uh, I didn't troll the Facebook I was on today. vacation <laughs> last week, not you. Uh, but um, I do <sighs> so want to say that you. the... Uh, Trail Days is coming up. I'm going to do another post about this pretty soon on social media. Um, we are more than half full. Um, we are actually, we're close to being full. Um, so if you have not signed up for Trail Days and it's something you're thinking about, Wheeling and Rind Rock to support here off-road, um, definitely go ahead and sign up. It's a $200 donation. Um, $250. $250, sorry, yeah. yeah $250 yeah, do yeah. donation. Um, Spots are filling up very quick. I want to say intermediate and difficult are already. I mean, we're within a couple people of that being full. There's yeah, plenty of I spots. I think we're going to have to open up intermediate a little bit more. I yeah, think that was um, popular. Now that yeah, I there's there's not a whole lot of people that went on easy. Which hey, I'm I'm actually really yeah, stoked yeah, for yeah. because I was expecting a lot of easy and um, a lot of people like nah hit me <laughs> hit me up on I that like the intermediate to hard stuff. So we might reroute that a little bit to open up more on intermediate. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't done that, theoutlawoffroad.com slash trail days, um, you can sign up there and that has the link directly to Hero Offroad to make that donation. We do not, uh, yeah, I, mean, not I think taking initially we had set, we had set that donation deadline at the 31st mm -hmm. and we made a post on, I think Wednesday, uh, on the 31st that extended that to today, Friday, just to make sure that people were given enough time to, cause most of the people uh, I would say a little over half the people, they made their donation as soon as they signed up. And then we had some more that came in. So we have a list now of uh, that we can compare who signed up versus who's actually made the donation. Because again, um, we've said it here a hundred times. We put it on the website. I don't understand how somebody can sign up and not know they have to donate. But there are those people out there. You know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, you're about to be kicked off signing up because you don't donate to Hero Off-Road. You're not coming to Trail Days. Yeah. So we're well, probably, close, unfortunately, there is probably going to be a couple of spots to open up because of that. So we're reaching out to those people actively trying to get them to finish their donation to Hero Off-Road. But if we cannot do that, then we will open up that spot for somebody. Because, again, at the end of the day, this is for Hero Off-Road. And we yep. want to make sure that they are getting everything that they need and everything that we want to give them. So um, we're, we're going to make sure we do that. So... Um, you know, keep an eye on that for, for it. Cause there's, as of right now, there's not a lot of spots. Yeah. Um, but I do anticipate a few more opening up and then a reorientation of probably yanking one of the beginner groups and adding an intermediate group, um, for that. But we're still, you know, we're still what, six weeks out from that, which yeah. is a pretty, pretty far way out. So, um, look for that. And then, um, we'll make, probably make another post with, probably Monday or Tuesday of next week, maybe Wednesday too, of letting people know, okay, we've got the spots go out. Because we only made, we really haven't advertised it that much. Except I've, made, here in the, I've made one big post. One Facebook post, <laughs> yeah. That was and it. it. And we've it keeps gotten getting it, shared, which is great. It's great. So we'll actually push for those last few spots. You know, we're not going to be doing paid Facebook advertising and all that because that's not what that's about. We're not no, trying uh -huh. to, we're not going to market this as an event, but we do want, we do want Hero to get a sizable amount of donation money, and they already have. I was about to say, and they have. Armando has um, messaged me. They have. Yeah, but I want them to get more. Amount. I want to make it a record. <laughs> I want them yeah. to get more. Uh, um, speaking of that, um, if you can't make Trail Days, if you got something going on, uh, but you have looked into Hero Off Road, you you know the organization, you know who runs it, 
you can still donate. Um, there's absolutely. absolutely nothing stopping you from donating. And uh, I'm sure that would actually be very much appreciated too. Mm-hmm. You can uh, donate in place for somebody. If you know a veteran or someone who wants to go on this ride who might not be able to afford it, um, you can yep. donate for them and sign them up. Um, yeah, all of that. And honestly, I don't care if it's a veteran that can't afford it. Pay for a veteran. I don't yeah, care whether it, the yeah, veteran can afford 100%. it or not. A friend yeah. of mine right now is in that case. I, I know he can afford it. But he was going to go and he was talking to somebody else. He goes, they told me not to pay for it. I was like, uh, bro, you're an army vet. I don't want you to pay for it. <laughs> He's yeah. like, well, I may still donate. I'm like, that's fine. That's totally cool. But I don't want you thinking that you got to donate to come to something that we're doing to show appreciation for vet. Like, don't do that. Yeah. Like, if you want to donate on your own, fine. And he can absolutely do that. But, you know, somebody else was telling him and I told him too. I was like, don't, don't do that. That's, we have spots just for guys like you um, and girls just like you so that, you know, we can get you out there. And I don't, I don't, whether you can or not, I don't really care. If you've got a veteran that you want to support to come out there, let us know who it is. Um, a couple of people have already done that mm-hmm. and I'm a hundred percent for it. Um, I'll probably do that myself as well. If there's anything else that needs to be covered. Cause that's again, at the end of the day, it's all about hero off road. So right. that's where we'll leave that. And we got some more posts coming on that. It does look like I talked about this the last time. It does look like Crandon, is going to be an ultra four race this year. Awesome. Um, There was some drama with whose schedule it was on and when it was coming and when we sign up as of right now, August 2nd is right at a month away. uh, As of right now, it looks like Crandon is going to happen for all classes. That's what it looks like. Fingers crossed. Knock Mm -hmm. on wood, everybody, because I want to go racing again. I am freaking ready. I I want to see it. We'll see what happens. I miss pulling the races up on the big screen and and watching them. (laughs) Uh, And that's supposed to get coverage. Uh, Mav TV announced that they were going to be covering um, live coverage and post-production coverage of that. And they said all classes, and they specifically mentioned in the release Ultra 4. Awesome. Um, So, you know, I don't know how they're going to do that. Last year was kind of a crap show. Um because there was so much racing going on races were going off two to two and a half hours after they were supposed to Mm -hmm. because of cleaning up the track watering the track stuff was you know they were they would they would assign 15 minutes for a race but then they forgot oh or 50 or so many laps thinking it was going to take so many minutes but then you have to remember that the guy who crossed the line last and the the lap still has to finish the lap and then he it it was Mm -hmm. there was some logistical stuff going on on the ultra four side, it's not the same people running it this year. Um, you know, you got some different guys in charge after hammer King kind of bought that series back. Um, so we'll see how the new management group goes. Those guys have a ton of experience. Um, I know, um, one of the guys is from NorCal rock racing, been doing it for years and years and years. So we're fingers crossed that a, it happens B that it happens somewhat efficiently and smoothly and then see that Mav TV follows through and ends up doing some good coverage of um, of all of it. So, you know, the big thing with us last year was they weren't covering the back half of the field mm-hmm. because we were racing 46, 46, 45, and 48, traditionally 4,600 slower. Now, myself and Bailey Cole were up there in the top 10, top 7 or 8 out of, I don't know, 40-some cars. But that's not average. We were faster than just the rest of – the 4600s and we were faster than most of the 48s and 45s um but i have some unfinished business there because bailey knows i want him there <laughs> i i want my car yeah. with no brake issues to go head to head with bailey um yeah. i i want that um i hope that he's there i hope that lauren brings the broncos back because damn that was fun um that was a lot of freaking fun racing those two guys especially the picture got taken of all three of us hitting the jump um, mm-hmm. And the Jeep was in front, by the way. The yeah, Jeep that was, was, I was about three quarters was of a cool. car length in front. So uh, I want more of that. It was super cool. I love racing those guys. Hopefully I make them a little bit better. And I know they make me better. Um, and it's just a great, great course. So fingers crossed that all that happens. And, of course, everybody in Jeep world knows Jeep Invasion's coming. Um, yep. Not sure if I'm going to be there. I know Outlaw Offroad's going to be around mm-hmm. um, doing some stuff kind of outside the show. I know, we're, I know there's going to be some people there. The schedule's kind of weird. Um, I haven't seen it marketed as much this year. I don't know if that's no. just me missing it. No, I um, no, they definitely or, have not marketed. Or they just it on don't need marketing media. anymore. 
Uh, Maybe they just don't need marketing anymore. I don't know. Now, uh, I will say that some of the guys from Outlaw Charlotte, I don't know who else is teaming up to do this. Um, they're going to, I can't really see yet. We're just, we're still talking about it, but I can say there are going to be raffles and giveaways and, yeah. and, and some cool things only if you have Outlaw for merch, so apparel, hats, or banners and stickers on your vehicle. Um, and if those Something. guys seeing you around, they will flag you down and and you might be entered to win Something. some really cool stuff. Um, there there may be a couple winches there. There may be a free couple bumpers, swag. maybe some free swag packs just for rocking a banner shirt. Um, super cheap. So yeah, if, I got uh, the, uh, if you I got listen the to list, this kind of the I got a little bit of the rundown yesterday. Of some of the stuff they're going to have to give away in it. It kind of makes me want it makes me want to go, but <laughs> but if Crandon happens, I'm probably not going to be there because last yeah. year I went and then I left early. Um, we took the race car out. We basically only took the race car out every night to like we went to the Quaker Steak after party. People looked at it. We drove it down the strip because it's stupid. It's stupid loud. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's dumb. So we, you know, I don't know. It's really just going to depend on Crandon and Ultra Four. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be really on top of that. We're if, if it's on, we're there. Like yeah. I'm there. And for me, that will supersede, for me, it will supersede my personal presence at Jeep Invasion. But, like, I know last year we had a big setup at Cades Cove. We'll be there again. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure we'll have some Jeeps out under the bridge at um, the after party again, I'm sure. Um, You know, we just, I just had so much fun last year. I don't know. I've talked, you know, we'll see. Maybe we'll do a booth next year. I don't know what we'll do. But it's fun to just kind of. All right, it looks like we have some technical difficulties on Doug's end, um, but we will go ahead and wrap this up here. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, like, subscribe, follow on all the platforms. We are available on uh, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, and Apple Podcast. Uh, we do release this show every Friday. Um, I try to get it done as early as possible, so you can listen to it on your morning drive. Uh, we definitely appreciate everyone listening, everyone tuning in, and we will bring back another episode next week on this episode of Dirt to Dust. You've been listening to Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road, the premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime... To see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.